I sold an Xbox Series S on eBay last week, and while that, yes, does technically make me a scalper, it also gave me a little bit of an insight to the future of gaming consoles. Hey everyone, this is Kevin the Entrepreneur. Now, this one's going to be a little sensitive for some people because I know that the topic of uh, scalpers is particularly sore among console gamers. And I've been very upfront. If I ever got any of these systems outside of the Series X, which was a birthday slash Christmas gift, guess what? I was going to scalp it. I mean, my whole thinking was, if you are willing to pay me to have, you know, my system next year so you can have yours now, I will do it. Now, I have managed to get a hold of one Xbox Series X two PlayStation 5s, and the Xbox Series S. Now, I can only show one at a time because, um, well, basically, I'm trying to cover up the store name. I don't want trolls to go there to buy stuff and then leave, you know, negative feedback. Or, you know what I mean. But here's the thing. Let's just say this. With the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5, all those systems sold for over $1,000 every time, no exception. One of them got as high as as $1,300. Now, I aimed for those systems because I knew they were in most demand. But however, this time, when Best Buy put up some new PlayStation 5s and Xbox Series Xs, I did not get one of those, but they still had some Xbox Series Ss, and I was looking on eBay, and a lot of people seemed to be selling them for about $500. And hey, you know what? That's just a hundred dollar profit. But hey, I will take a hundred dollar profit over no profit at all. And I did the th same thing that well, you s everybody does. Um, for all, well, I've done that for all my systems. I should say I started it auction style. One day, one dollar. And no, I had no fear that it was going to sell for one dollar. None of them came close to selling for less than the retail price, except for this one. Now, I was actually getting pretty nervous about this one because as I watched the uh, I, I, I watched the auction and the last five minutes come, it was still like 240. And at less than two minutes, that was like very, very uncomfortable for my taste. For the other systems, I had almost doubled my money by the time the last two minutes came along. So I did not care, especially since there's a flurry of last minute bidding, or last second bidding, I should say. But when the series ended, they it ended at $325. Here's the thing. That's like $3 less than what I paid for this thing. Now, I made a little bit of that money back with the shipping. I charged $50 for shipping with the option that people could pay more if they truly want to be next day. And, well, you know, the shipping ended up not being quite as expensive as I thought. It was like $20 less than I thought. So, I mean, here's the thing. I still had to insure and buy the signature confirmation, but I more or less broke even on this. I broke even on, on this system. So, you know, not, not a loss per se, but not exactly what I wanted to do. Also, when I bought the system, I charged Discover on my Discover card, which that has a 5% cash back on Best Buy, so I'm going to get some money back on that way too. But here's what this told me about the current generation. This is the first generation of consoles where digital-only devices are a thing. Like, I mean, yeah, they made the Xbox all digital, Xbox uh, One S all digital edition, aka Xbox one sad <laughs> uh yeah that's that's a real thing and the verdict on whether or not all digital consoles could be successful was frankly still out it was too expensive a lot of people didn't want it but this is the first generation where with the main system launch there are going to be digital only systems the playstation 5 has a disc less version and, of course, you have the Xbox Series S. Now, here's the thing. Right now, they're all selling out. 
because it's one of those things where it's like, hey, if you can't get the X or you can't get the disc-based system, you're going to grab the digital edition because it might be months until you get it. And that's the thinking a lot of people are doing. So I think right now it's too early to say for certain whether or not you know the digital selling out means anything. Right now, I think it's just a supply and demand issue. People want a PlayStation 5. They can't get the one with the disc. There's a digital there's a digital version available, heck, just buy that one. I mean, you can worry about getting the disc later. But in the resale market, I think it points to a future where the disc versions will be more popular. They will be more popular. Because here's the thing, again, I sold an Xbox Series X and I made a little over $1,000, double the money back. PlayStation 5s, same thing, heck, one of the PlayStation 5s made almost triple my money back. Uh, that was insane. And it's like, and if you wonder why scalpers do this, this this is why. But the Xbox Series S, so close to Christmas, still out of the hands of many people, still so many people desperate to get it, sells for basically the, uh, the price what I paid for it. That's basically what it does. Totally broke even on this one. And here's and here's the interesting thing. The Xbox Series S is much cheaper than the X. If you're when the consoles are plentiful and readily available, the S is going to be $200 less than the X. The PlayStation 4 discless version is going to be $100 less. Although, if you have a PlayStation 4, that's hardly worth the savings. You can sell your PlayStation 4 and pretty much get your $100 back in there. You can get your disk drive. But the S is going to be $200 less. That's a significant difference from what the X is being charged for. What's more, I mean, even like under my most my optimistic projections that I'd be selling the S on eBay for five or $600, that's still roughly half than what the Xbox Series X sold for. Now, I did an auction style, and even though this thing is very hard to find, and Xboxes are in just as much demand as the PlayStation 5s, it still only sells enough to basically break even. That kind of got me thinking, like, huh. So... Right now, people are saying that maybe digital is finally here in the future. People clearly do not mind buying a digital-only console, and eventually the discs will be drives will be faded out. I don't think so, because from my experience, people will pay if it has a disc drive. In my case, they paid much more for the systems with a disc drive. For the record, I never got a PlayStation 5 all digital edition. I, I just, all the PlayStation, the PlayStation 5s I got were disk drives. So I can't attest to that one. But here's the thing, I did get an Xbox Series X, sold over $1,000. Got the Xbox Series S, I broke even. And to me, that shows where the true love really is. Now, some of you might be saying, well, here's the thing, the consoles have been out for a couple months, maybe they just don't want to pay a lot of money for something that's going to be on the store shelves. Again, they are fully willing to pay double the money for the X, which has a disk drive. For the S, not so much. So even though I think the Xbox Series S and the PlayStation 5 Digital Edition will sell well enough, there will be a certain percentage of people who just want to do all digital and these will be the most successful digital-only consoles ever released. I don't think I'm going to argue with that one. But will it be enough to convince the gaming companies that digital is the future? That it's viable without the disc? I don't think it's going to be this generation. I really don't. I think with this, when this generation comes to an end, the disc drives will still be in more demand than the ones without the discs. And... The next console generation will probably have discs as well. Now, at some point, the, when the digital starts overtaking the consoles with the disc drive, and people are buying more digital consoles than disc drive consoles, then you might see someone pull the trigger. But 
even in this day and age where we've got Steam and Google Stadia and, you know, the main reason to get the Xbox right now is the Game Pass so that you can play all of these ga old games and just have access to hundreds of games. I, I've i never had a console launch where I did not buy a game at launch. The only two games I wanted was on Xbox Game Pass, so why buy them? You know what I'm saying? But I think digital still has a way to go. I think this, I mean, maybe this is not exactly science. This is my personal eBay listing. Who knows? Had it ended one hour later, maybe it would have done better. I don't know. But like I said, I, the other systems I sold at much higher prices, this one, look, it was an interesting experiment. I broke even. I don't, te didn't technically lose any money. So, you know, whatever, no skin off my teeth. But it does kind of show that the digital system was nowhere near in demand as the other systems that had disk drive, and that kind of makes me wonder what this thing is going to be selling like once it's all readily available. In fact, I would not be surprised if when Microsoft starts, you know, more regularly restocking the store shelves, at first when there's more in stock and the hype has kind of died a little bit, you will probably not see Xbox Series X's on store shelves for a while. But I think the the Xbox Series S, I think you will see more of those on store shelves with the question being frequent, do you have the X's in stock? And when they say no, okay, we're going to wait. I think that's what's going to happen going forward. But I would like to know what you think about this. Do you agree or do you disagree? I'd love to know. Comment below. Like, favorite, share, subscribe. And as always, flame responsibly. Have a good one. Thank <laughs> you.